Hello music fans, welcome to the Death by Unicorn channel for another episode of What's New 2023 where I talk about new albums that came out recently in metal, rock, and prog. Uh, today I'm going to talk about six albums that came out on February 10th, 2023, but before I do that I want to mention two that I missed that came out on February 3rd uh, that I heard after that and enjoyed. Uh, the first of those being by the band Zop, and it's called Dominion. This is progressive rock with some jazz fusion influences. It's the second album from this band from the UK, and they play kind of in the Canterbury scene style of prog rock. Big thanks to Rhyme Signatures for his review of this album on his channel that put it on my radar. A lot of the moments on this album are instrumental and jazzy, but there are moments with vocals as well as some more rocking moments. Uh, my favorite track on this is You. It's an 11 minute mini epic that has vocals, but they only kick in after three and a half minutes of the instrumental intro. And secondly, I want to mention We Came From Space and their album Overlords. This is progressive rock as well. It's the third album by this American band. And thanks to Nathan on Shuffle for making me aware of this release. This features Bill Hubauer, who used to be in the Neil Morse band on keyboards. And my favorite track here is the title track, Overlords. This is for fans of the Neil Morse band. It's got some accessible, catchy, and poppy moments and hooks interspersed with wild, proggy interludes. Now let's jump into the ones that uh, just came out very recently over the past week on February 10th. And I'll talk about these six albums in my order of preference, starting with Clone and their album Meanwhile. And this is progressive metal, kind of not super metal or super heavy, almost progressive rock, kind of on the border between progressive metal and rock. It's got some post-rock influences too, a lot of atmosphere to it. It's the seventh album from this French band. And while the band's from France, the lyrics are in English. I heard one of the singles before the album, and the vocals sounded great, so I put this on my list of albums to check out. And I like that this band has a bit of a metal sound, but they don't sound genty, so they sound more like early 2000s alternative metal and new metal in terms of their guitar tone, but they bring in a lot more atmosphere and ambience than most bands in those scenes. If you're a fan of bands like Tool, Deftones, and The Ocean, um, imagine those bands, but bringing in more atmospheric, ambient post-rock or post-metal influences like Sigur Rós and Cult of Luna. Mix all those in a mixing pot, and then you'll have the sound of this clone album. My favorite track on here is Bystander. Next, I want to talk about E Molecule and their album The Architect. This is also similar in sound to the last one, kind of on the border between progressive rock and metal. Um, but this one has some more electronic influences, as well as, I'd say, kind of poppy, more catchier hooks, kind of more accessible to the mainstream, but also the ambient and post-rock influences in there, too. Uh, I hear a bit of that. And this is the debut album by two former members of the band Sound of Contact, who are uh, Simon Collins, the son of the legendary Phil Collins, and Kelly Nordstrom. And the early singles I heard here, they sounded really cerebral and hypnotic, reminiscent of Tool, but without as much metal bite. Um, and then there's catchy vocal hooks. They remind me of the band Ghost. Um, really catchy hooks there, but bringing in more ambient progressive rock vibes. I think this is a really solid debut album from this group. My favorite tracks are The Architect and Beyond Belief. Uh, some of the tracks on this album are super atmospheric and not metal at all, but some have quite the metal edge to them. So I think fans of metal can enjoy this, but also people who are typically avoiding progressive metal and like to stay just in the progressive rock lane, I think you'll like this too. It's not too much metal to scare uh, normal people off. Uh, next, I want to talk about In Flames and their album Foregone. This is kind of alternative metal with some melodic death metal and metalcore influences. This is the 14th album by the Swedish uh, melodic death metal pioneers. Their more recent 
work has been more on the alternative metal side, but the early releases of this album kind of sounded like they were bringing back some of their older sound, which will likely excite a lot of the fans who like their old stuff and not their new stuff. I'm a bit weird, and I actually... Uh, I'm unusual with my taste for Inflames. I like their alternative metal releases a bit better than their early classic uh, melodic death metal albums, but I do respect all their albums, and I know my kind of stance on this band is not kind of the popular opinion. Um, but I was really anticipating this album. It was in my top five most anticipated albums of the quarter, and it was a pretty good listen. It had some songs that had their older melodic death metal style, some with their newer alternative metal sound, with some metalcore and pop influences, like clean vocals and catchy anthemic choruses. The guitar solos on this album are solid, and I think it's a good album, but it's also hard for me to be that excited by it, so I'm still not sure if it will stand the test of time as I continue to listen to it. Um, I might just decide it's kind of standard average in Flame album and, uh, and not choose to go back to it as much as some of their others that I like better. And uh, so I'm not sure if I'll revisit it much, but it's pretty good. Next, I want to mention Pierce the Veil and their album, The Jaws of Life. This is post-hardcore with emo, pop, and progressive rock influences. It's the fifth album by this American group. And I always enjoy their work, but they've never quite cracked my top 200 favorite bands or anything like that. Because there's just so many bands that I like, and this has always been maybe a B-list favorite of mine. They've got that emo vocal style, so you have to be ready for that. Um, but they always have cool compositions, great guitar work, catchy hooks. This album is a lot poppier than their other work that I, as far as I remember. Uh, it's very catchy and emotional. My favorite track on here is So Far So Fake because it had a cool rhythm in the intro. I think it was 11 beats per bar or something like that. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Next, I wanna mention the Deathcore album by the band Distant, and it's called Heritage. It's the third album by this Dutch band. And I listened to a couple of the early singles and it just sounded pretty intense. Um, so I was kind of curious where they would go with it. I was hoping it would go a bit beyond the bounds of deathcore and experiment and innovate a bit. But unfortunately, it kind of stayed in its lane. However, if that's what you're looking for, if you want brutal guttural vocals over intense breakdowns to just mosh to for an entirety of an album, um, or you want an album that just doesn't let up or never goes soft even for a moment, this could be an album for you. It just kind of beats you over the head and pummels you with brutality the whole time. And the lyrics all seem pretty gory, which is kind of par for the course in this deathcore genre as well. No real innovation on that front either. Just a decent album for moshing and headbanging too. If you want something extreme, I probably won't go back to it too much because I feel like it lacks some variety and anything interesting to make it stand out. There is a track on here that features Will Ramos of Lorna Shore, which is probably the most interesting and memorable track. His vocals are always uh, kind of the top of that scene. And lastly, I want to mention Paramore and their album, This Is Why. And this is a pop rock album. It's got some punk and alternative influences as well. It's their sixth album. They're an American band. I feel like they lost a bit of their edge when Josh Farrow, the founding guitarist, left. I hope to hear something that rivals uh, their earlier work with him. Uh, even though Haley Williams is an iconic female pop punk emo vocalist, she always performs at top notch level, but the songs themselves I find were nothing special to me. So while it's not bad, this definitely is one that can be skipped. Even for people who are fans of their old stuff, it's pretty standard pop rock stuff. Nothing uh, too exciting here. And that's it for albums that I listened to that were released on February 10th and a couple albums that I missed from February 3rd. Let me know if there's anything else awesome that you think I missed that I should check out. And until next time, peace out.